Good morning and welcome to the Word Line. I am Elder Charmaine Ernest, and I thank the visionary of this house, uh, Elder Barbara Trotter, for the vision of the Word Line. This is the place where we come together to rightly divide the word of truth. The, the Holy Spirit in each one of us is will teach all of us the things that we need to know. And we come together every morning, Monday through Friday for 15 minutes to bring a word from the Lord. We are studying the book of Revelation. My assignment today is uh, chapter nine, Revelations chapter nine, verses seven through 11, seven through 11. And uh, I'm sharing my screen with you. And the topic of my lesson today is the locusts of the fifth trumpet. The locusts of the fifth trumpet. This is the first woe. The apostle John is describing in the vision, the, the vision of revelations. Throughout, he's been giving us pictures of things that he's seeing in the heavenlies. He was a first century man and he was describing and giving pictures of things that will happen in the future from him. The future would be like our time today, okay? Because we know that we're living in the last days. Now, reading my scripture for today, Revelation 9, verses 7 through 11, the locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron across their chests and the sounds of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers like a scorpion's tail. And in their tails, they had the power to torment people for five months. They had, and in verse 11, they said, they had as king over them, the angel of the abyss whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek is Apollyon, that is the destroyer. We know him as Satan. Now, when we talk about locusts, I want to show you, uh, we, 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 when we talk about the locusts, I want to show you what a, what a real locust looks like, okay? What a, uh, I'm going to stop, I'm going to do a new share, and this is what a a locust looks like in real life. Now, this is not the ones that, that they saw, but this is what a, a locust looks like. In looks like a grasshopper, but it's, it's different than a grasshopper. That's what the locust looks like in real life. And also they have, um, these locusts have, they, when they come, they come and, and they swarm. They swarm into the uh, the area where they are uh, where they're being where they're eating, and they swarm. It'd be billions and billions of them, and I want you to see that in this little video right here. And you can hear them. You see how they? That's how they're gonna come. They come like that, and they destroy everything. They eat everything in their wake, and they. Can you imagine being in the midst of something like this where there are stingers on them like tails of a scorpion and they are uh, are stinging you every day, but not killing you, just messing with you. That's what it says. Now, when we go back to our screen when uh, and our lesson today, it talks about these locusts. Uh, they're described uh, when you read earlier in chapter nine, we talked about how the uh, the abyss was opened and the demons came out. These the these they the locusts are briefly described as these demonic creatures, and they're only vaguely like the common insect. But I wanted you to see the common insect and how they look. Now John goes on to describe these locusts 
He says they resemble like war horses and, and they have they, to be expected since locust heads and horse heads have a similar shape. They, they wear what appear to be a crown across their heads and they're either a literal piece of jewelry or it could be a golden colored band on their head. And I'm gonna show you a picture. John depicts them with women's hair and lion's teeth. If you see the picture right here, this is how uh, they're seen. And it says their sound is thunderously loud wings. I got several different depictions of them. It's like they have women's hair and crown and teeth like a lion and wings and the, the, tarp, the scorpion's tail. And you see how they swarming in the back back in this picture? That's one depiction of it. This is another depiction of it. This is a depiction of, of the same thing, the same locus and how they would come. But there's also, I have another uh, picture of the locus that uh, is similar to, to this one. Let me get it for us. Okay. When we talk about our, 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 our locus and what's going on with them, we look at this picture right here. This is a side view of what that would look like that with the crown and the teeth like a lion and the hair like a woman and a breastplate across his chest and the the tail like a scorpion that would be stinging them stinging the people that would be in the world and they was, would come in billions they would come in billions now when you look at this think about this man was a, a first century man and he was describing something that would be existing in our time today. And, and it would have wings and it would have a uh, sound and it would be metal with breastplate. And, and let's look at what we would think that would be today, okay? And because when John was, was giving his uh, revelation, he had to think about what in this, in his time, could he relate to what was happening in our time? Now, some people suggest that John's attempt at describing something like that would be a helicopter, a modern helicopter. So let's look at what a modern helicopter would look like in comparison to uh, what, what John was saying, what he saw that time. Let's look at that. This is a, a modern day helicopter. It has wings, okay? And it has the, the tail coming up the back. <clears throat> it's flying. It, it looks like that, like a face, because it, you know, when the front of a helicopter, it has like uh, the windows look like eyes on one side and a face on the front. So it could possibly be, we can't, we don't know for sure. However, I want you to hear the sound of, the helicopter. I want to give you a new share and I want you to see the sound, what it sounds like, okay? And it's because it says that these locusts would have a thunderous, loud sound. Let's listen to what a helicopter sounds like. Can you imagine what a sound like that? Billions and billions of locusts. Look at that helicopter. That looks like what he was describing, you know? Just give you an example. So I'm gonna stop sharing and go back to my lesson for today. And as we see the helicopter, we saw that the last verse that we was dealing with was verse 11. They talked about they, these locusts had a king over them. And the angel, they called him the angel of the abyss whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek is Ap Apollyon, and that is the destroyer. Now the leader of these creatures, and, and it's, it's specific and, and good that we understand the name in both Hebrew and Greek, because we know that that was representing Satan. That is the representation of Satan, and he was called the prince of the locusts. They called him that, see the, the similarity in the titles. He was the king over them because they were demons, 
that he was the one that had opened the key, opened the a bottom a pit for them to get out. He was the angel of the abyss. And Abaddon and Apollyon, destroyer, those were the appropriate names for Satan. Let me say this to you, men and, men and women of God, we do not want to be in the world when this is happening. We do not want to be a part of that. We do not want to have missed the rapture when, when the believers in Jesus Christ are taken away because they, we will not be there when that happens. If you want to be out, you, you don't want to be there, you need to get yourself right with the Lord today, okay? You need to make sure that you're not there when these locusts that look like men with crowns and they have a scorpion tail and they are going to be stinging people. You, I mean, millions and billions of them stinging people, not to kill them, just to torment them for five months without end. You don't want to be there. And if you don't want to be there, then I'm going to tell you how you can not be there. You need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The scripture tells us what we must do to be saved. It's, it's written in the Bible in Romans, the chapter, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. It says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth two things, that Jesus is Lord and that Jehovah raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. That means you won't be in that, uh, when that first woe come, when that fifth trumpet sounds, you will not be there. Okay, so we go. We, if you want to do that, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord, you can repeat these life changing words after me. I believe in my heart, and, uh, I believe in my heart, and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Repeat that after me. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and that Jehovah raised Jesus from the dead. I now receive my salvation and my righteousness. I now receive the forgiveness of my sins and eternal life. I now receive my divine mental and physical health. And I also receive my financial prosperity. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you said those words for the very first time, you just got saved. You just got became a child of God. You are a joint heir with Christ. You have a parent-child relationship with Jehovah. He's our father. And you have been adopted into his family. And he is not, you will not be there when that woe comes and those, those locusts are stinging the people that's going to be there. Woe to them because there's going to be some suffering going on. And we don't want to be there. So if you know, when it, the scripture says that when a person accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior, at that moment, there's a party going on in heaven. The angels are rejoicing. They're dancing because a sinner has gotten saved. And we want to rejoice with you because ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. It's a Holy Ghost party when you give your life to the Lord. So you have a blessed day. And tomorrow morning, look forward to Elder Barbara Trotter as she comes forth with that sixth trumpet. Okay, and we'll talk to you in the second woe. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.